You have to go through life with more than just passion for change. You need a strategy. I'll repeat that. I want you to have passion. You have to have a strategy. Not just awareness, but action. Not just hashtags, but votes. You see, change requires more than righteous anger. It requires a program and it requires organizing. The 1964 Democratic Convention, Fannie Lou Hamer, five feet four inches tall, gave a fiery speech on the national stage. But then she went back home to Mississippi and organized cotton pickers. And she didn't have the tools and technology where you can whip up a movement in minutes. She had to go door to door. But to bring about structural change, lasting change, awareness is not enough. It requires changes in law, changes in custom. If you care about mass incarceration, let me ask you, how are you pressuring members of Congress to pass the criminal justice reform bill now pending before them? If you care about better policing, do you know who your district attorney is? Do you know who your state's attorney general is? Do you know the difference? Do you know who appoints the police chief? And who writes the police training manual? Find out who they are, what their responsibilities are. Mobilize the community. Present them with a plan. Work with them to bring about change. Hold them accountable if they do not deliver. Passion is vital, but you got to have a strategy. And your plan better include voting. Not just some of the time, but all of the time. It is absolutely true that 50 years after the Voting Rights Act, there are still too many barriers in this country to vote. There are too many people trying to erect new barriers to voting. This is the only advanced democracy on earth that goes goes out of its way to make it difficult for people to vote. And there's a reason for that. There's a legacy to that. Change requires more than just speaking out. It requires listening as well. In particular, it requires listening to those with whom you disagree and being prepared to compromise. You know, when I was a state senator, I helped pass Illinois' first racial profiling law. And one of the first laws in the nation requiring the videotaping of confessions in capital cases. And we were successful because early on I engaged law enforcement. I didn't say to them, oh, there's this, you guys are so racist, I, you know, you need to do something. I understood, as many of you do that the overwhelming majority of police officers are good and honest and courageous and fair and love the communities they serve. And we knew there were some bad apples and that even good cops with the best of intentions, including, by the way, African-American police officers might have unconscious biases, as we all do. So we engaged and we listened and we kept working until we built consensus. And because we took the time to listen, we crafted legislation that was good for the police because it improved the trust and cooperation of the community, and it was good for the communities who were less likely to be treated unfairly. There will be times when you shouldn't compromise your core values, your integrity, and you will have the responsibility to speak up in the face of injustice. But listen. Engage. If the other side has a point, learn from them. If they're wrong, rebut them, teach them, beat them on the battlefield of ideas. And you might as well start practicing now because one thing I can guarantee you, you will have to deal with ignorance, hatred, racism, foolishness, trifling folks. I promise you, you will have to deal with all that at every stage of your life. That may not seem fair, but life has never been completely fair. Nobody promised you a crystal stand. And if you want to make life fair, then you've got to start with the world as it is. So, that's my advice. That's how you change things. Change isn't something that happens every four years or eight years. Change is not placing your faith in any particular politician. 
and then just putting your feet up and saying, okay, go. Change is the effort of committed citizens who hitch their wagons to something bigger than themselves and fight for it every single day. Now it's your turn. And the good news is you're ready. And when your journey seems too hard, and when you run into a chorus of cynics who tell you that you're being foolish to keep believing, or that you can't do something, or that you should just give up, or you should just settle, you might say to yourself a little phrase that I've found handy these last eight years. Yes, we can. 